This is the Oregon Ducks Halftime Report. Here's Ron Carlson. A good afternoon to you and welcome to the Ducks Halftime Report. We have a lot of highlights for you from not only the first half of today's Oregon-UCLA game, but also from the Washington-USC battle along with some other sports news for you. But first, let's look at what happened in the first half of today's game. The Ducks get the first possession right here. Bill Musgrave to J.J. Burden. But J.J. ends up fumbling the ball right after the reception and UCLA ends up recovering it. Four turnovers for the Ducks in the first half. The Bruins march Troy Aikman to Brian Brown. A one-yard TD pass, and it's 7-0 UCLA. The Ducks fumble once again. This is Terry Obi. He can't handle the punt, and UCLA recovers, and the, the Ducks, or the Bruins, are in good territory once again, but the Ducks' defense is making up for the offense's mistakes. Anthony Newman with the sack, and the Ducks hold the Bruins once again. Late in the half, the Ducks finally get on the offensive side with a score. Musgrave to J.J. Burden. This time he holds on, and he goes 69 yards all the way down to the Bruins' two-yard line before he's wrestled to the ground. That sets up Oregon's only touchdown of the first half. Derek Lavelle, one yard. And it ties it up at seven apiece. But after that, another turnover leads to another Bruins score. Troy Aikman to Willie Anderson from four yards out. The Bruins at a field goal. That's where it is right now. 17-7 UCLA at halftime. Up in Seattle today, the first two Pac-10 teams the Ducks upset this year met each other at Husky Stadium. The USC Trojans visiting Washington before more than 70,000 fans. And the Trojans are first to get on the scoreboard. Trojan quarterback Rodney Pete to Eric Affholder here. This is a 14-yard TD play, and it's 7-0 Trojans. But the Huskies end up tying it up thanks to a play that's pretty hard to practice. Watch this. Aaron Jenkins with the ball. Boom, the fumble. It works just like a lateral, though. Goes right to Chris Chandler, the Husky quarterback, and he takes it 50 yards. It sets up a Husky score, but the Trojans have added another score now, and it's 13-7 USC in the second quarter. In a game shown earlier this morning on Channel 2, the Michigan Wolverines used the Air Mail Express to put their stamp on Iowa. Michigan quarterback Demetrius Brown to Don Colazar. It's 16 to nothing, Wolverines. But here's the shock treatment. Right before the half, Brown throws a Hail Mary. Now, these hardly ever work, but watch. This time it does. Greg McMurtry pulls it down. The Wolverines put down Iowa today by a score of 37 to 10. Taking a look at how the top 10 teams are doing, top-ranked Oklahoma leading Kansas State at the half by 21. Number two-ranked Nebraska also leading by 21 at halftime. Florida State plays Louisville tonight. Number five, Auburn wins again this afternoon, 20 to 10 over Georgia Tech. Sixth ranked LSU also wins today. Number seven, Clemson by just a TD over Duke. Eighth ranked Tennessee plays the Crimson Tide tonight. Now in the game you've been watching, of course, ninth ranked UCLA 17, 16th ranked Oregon seven at halftime. And Syracuse, they look ready to pull off a big upset today. They lead Penn State by a score of 27 to nothing at halftime. Well, it's getting tough enough getting one football team ready to play in the NFL these days, so you can just imagine. Back live in Pasadena's Rose Bowl. We're nearing the beginning of the third quarter here. UCLA 17, Oregon 7. The Bruins on top by 10 points. Some interesting halftime statistics to share with you. In the first down category, UCLA with seven first downs. The University of Oregon with six. Rushing, listen to this. UCLA has rushed the ball a total of 15 yards. Oregon just eight yards. Passing 129 yards for the Ducks, 80 for the Bruins. And total yards, 137 for Oregon, 95 for UCLA. So in the statistical department, the Ducks are holding their own, but on the scoreboard, they're down by 10. One major statistic, the Ducks with four turnovers, the Bruins with none. Obviously, that's that's the difference in the game so far, Steve, the turnovers. And, and you've got to be, if you're a Duck fan, saying what if right now. And hopefully we won't have to say that at the end of the game. But uh, turnovers of the game, uh, you look at the time of possession also, the Ducks have, have been losing that battle. UCLA, uh, 19 minutes of possession, the Ducks, 11. So uh, the Ducks need to, to keep their defense off the field and get their offense on there more, cut down the turnovers, and we've got a whole new ball game. Rich Brooks knows mistakes are the main difference. His players know mistakes are the main difference. So what do you say at halftime? You cut down on the mistakes. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. I mean, the, the mistakes they've had, the fumbles, the, inter, the interception, maybe Musgrave forced that ball in there a little bit too much. But I think that the fumbles are something that, that you just can't talk about. You've just got to put them behind you, say exactly. that was it. Let's go on to the next play. Let's go out and, you know, get the Bruins. Exactly. When you're looking ahead to the second half of action, you can't dwell on the first half. You can't dwell on the four mistakes. 
or else you know you'll be taken out of the second half of play. Oh, no question about it. Uh, this is a whole new ball game. We've got uh, 40 minutes of football left, and the Ducks are look like ready to go. Uh, there's no question they should be leading this ball game. And if it wasn't for the turnovers, I'm sure they would be. Bright spots, definitely the Oregon defense. I thought they played extremely well in the first half. They've been on the field a lot. They came up with some crucial plays. And without their efforts, uh, the margin would be bigger. Oh, no question about it. They've come in in the most adverse situations, it stiffened up, and, and really made this game close. And, and without the Duck defense playing as well as they have, we'd be out of this game. Okay, Oregon will receive the kickoff offensively now. What should we look for? I don't think Rich Brooks or